Hey guys, so I thought I'd do a quick video. I've done another one driving in Greece, some top tips for tourists. That was in the day, so I thought I'd do one in the night as well. So, this is a typical small provincial town. Uh, street lighting is a bit hit and miss. They're rolling out these uh, new uh, LED street lights now, so they're quite good. But apart from that, it can be a bit patchy in town, street light wise. So here we're driving along a, a typical uh, country road, if you like. So you can see that we've got zero road markings on the left or the right or in the middle. Well, this is completely normal. And if you do see any road markings, they're not, it's not going to be this reflective. So we can see that we're coming along a super straight road here in the middle of nowhere. Signage is minimal. And then there is a sign at the end here to let us know that this goes straight into a 90 degree corner. Other things to note are wildlife. Tons of wildlife around, generally everywhere in the city, in the countryside, there's wildlife everywhere. So hedgehogs are a big thing this year. You'll see a lot of dead hedgehogs on the road. Look, there's not a lot you can do, but I'm just saying that, you know, be prepared for a lot of wildlife. We're coming along here relatively big road it's three lanes one way with a hard shoulder what you do have at least in northern Greece is you do tend to have like a traffic light like this on a major three lane road which can be a bit disconcerting to start with with regards to the traffic lights uh, if you see a traffic light flashing orange it just means that nobody has right of way so you need to work that out when you get to the junction you can see here that uh, they have the uh, orange lights before the main traffic light so look the timing is not always uh, spot on but when it's flashing orange the light is red and when it stops flashing orange it's green or it's going to change to green we're going from uh, Perea to uh, the center of Thessaloniki see this car's got some sort of wicked number plate on it I have got I'm not going to pretend to know what that is. Uh, petrol stations in Greece. There's loads of petrol stations. I would say a lot of them, I'd say maybe 80% of them, will uh, close at 10, 11 o'clock in the evening. But you'll have the odd few then that are open uh, 24 hours. Uh, when you're filling up with gas in Greece, it's all... I've never seen a self-service gas station in Greece, ever there's always someone that will come out and pump the gas for you so either you can sit in the car wind the window down tell them how much you want to put in maybe they'll ask you if you want like uh, apple leave like standard 95 or super like 100 octane if you just want 95 just say apple and tell them how much you want but like i said in other videos most people speak english here anyways Something about shell petrol stations in Greece, I don't know what it's like now because I don't use them anymore, but they, you, there was a time there when you'd go in <coughs> and they give you the big cell on the uh, V power and they like that is their default choice. So unless you specify specifically that you want a normal 95, they would put in uh, V power, but the V power is a uh, 95 octane. I'm not sure if it's like that in the rest of Europe, but there's something to bear in mind. Long story short, I never put in V power in Greece ever because I don't see why I should pay like an extra 10 cents a litre for the same octane fuel. So I avoid it like the plague shell. Like I said, I don't know if they still give you the hard sell on that. Now, at the moment, my favourite is uh, Rev Oil because they have a very good price on the 100 octane fuel. I think their 100 octane is very is the, probably the cheapest of all the companies so people love to drive drive in the middle lane in Greece at least where I am and I think a lot of that is to do with the uh, with the nature of the slip roads the slip roads usually quite short so cars that are joining the motorway they're usually going quite slowly because they don't get enough space to get up to speed so rather than having to pull in and pull out for, at every junction to let people in because they're not at the speed of the motorway 
people just stick to, um, well, a lot of people stick to the uh, middle lane. And basically, I think it's just like Britain with regards to the highway code. You should over, only overtake on the left, but if the lane on the right is moving faster, then you can pass people on the right also. Rectangular sign, blue background, white car with a red across it. It is, I don't know what the f*** these people are doing there. Means that the, it's an end of a motorway. Parking here is super civilized. It should be like this every country in Europe, but unfortunately, they seem to be going in the opposite direction. They go into like the European, uh, the European way, whereby you can't park anywhere in the town centers, and uh, nobody wants to go to town centers anymore. Whereas in Greece, fortunately, you can still park as long as you're not blocking the road. You can park anywhere you want. It's all down to common sense. Like this road, relatively quiet now in the night. It's two lanes one way, so there's no problem with cars parked on the right side here and even to a certain extent have no real problem with uh, double parking even in the night I mean it's not you're not restricting the flow of traffic at all uh, whereas if this was the day double parking is a bit of a no-no because the road is that much busier so it's just common sense it's it's if you if you think you're going to be blocking the road parking where you are then don't park there and if you, if you think you're not going to be blocking the road, if you're not getting in anyone's way, then, you know, feel free to park there. But like I said, things are changing, which is uh, going to be a big shame. We'll need to turn uh, right off this road here and we'll go through some uh, back roads through the, uh, through the city. This is what I mean about the roundabouts. Look, if you, look, I believe it or not, I've got right of way there. I don't, honestly, I like to give way to people on the uh, on the roundabout just because I'm hoping to get everybody to do the same thing. So I like to set an example on it. But I made an exception there because the guy was already stopped, you know, and I was moving quite quickly. So very narrow streets can be. Here is a classic example not here, this next junction here. Here is a classic example of uh, having to pay attention to the road signs. So you can see here that we've got uh, two stop signs on the left and the right. They're not always going to be so obvious, but if you're not sure, there's no road markings here and it's a crossroads. If you're not sure, look for the road signs. And even if it says, doesn't say anything, when you do cross, just take it easy and just check both ways. It doesn't harm to be careful, you know? It's a bit, when I see accidents in the city, they're either gonna be at traffic lights or they're gonna be at a crossroads like that where two cars, one has not realized that they've got to give way and the other one thinks they've got right of way. But long story short, you can't be sure that the other person knows that they've got a stop sign. So, you know, within reason, check the way is clear. Yeah, be prepared for taxis to stop everywhere and anywhere at any time with little or no notice I forgot to do a, an outro guys so I'll do it now basically all the, all the little cars beeping and what have you is because a car that just won the uh, Greek cap in football they've done the double so I got a bit, a bit distracted by that but basically that's the video those are my observations of, uh, of driving in Greece, hopefully if you are with you if you're, uh, if you're coming to Greece. As always, thank you for watching. If you're a subscriber already, thank you very much for subscribing to the channel. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Look after yourself and I'll see you again next time.